All right, it's day two of the uh, eight game. I am a little sleepy. I got my monster. Um, and uh, cards from the air in about two and a half minutes. So, uh, yeah, gotta go. I'm uh, actually, I thought I was chip leader. I'm actually second in chips. Um, 348,000, some guy I guess won the last couple hands and has 370. Um, only two of us over 300. So, yeah, should be good. Hello. Hello. Sir? Hi. Yeah? Take it all in. So it's in the second level, um, day two, there's probably, um, so blinds are normally 8,000 and 16,000 for the big bet in the um, eight game. This will be a no limit hold'em hand with a $500 ante and two and 4,000 are the blinds. Um, there's about 24 left and um, 20 will make the money. So I'm gonna wake up with ace jack in middle position slash hijack because we're six handed. Um, the, uh, I'm going to go ahead and open to 9,000 and the button is going to raise to, um, 22.3,000, 23,000. You know, that's similar to the raise sizing that I used yesterday, um, discourages the blinds, um, doesn't do a lot to for me to leave with my chip stack size um, and you know maybe it's one of those things where if I four bet he could get away from it and not lose as many chips if you bet something like 31,000 um, you know that's 10 more thousand for his stack of about 200 so he can serve some chips that way definitely discourages the blinds and allows me to play more passively toward him in position. So, um, like I said, he'll three bet to 23.3 thousand. I will make the call and get a fair, fairly favorable eight, nine, 10 with two spade flop, um, giving me the open ended straight draw. And I'm gonna check over to the three better. And he is going to put in a C bet of 25 thousand. And, um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, he's going to have some over pairs here. This is a very wet board. This could be very dangerous for his hand. Um, he could have anything from, you know, pocket sevens, sixes, fives, to pockets jacks, queens, and kings, um, to any combination of straight draws. Um, definitely a good flop for something like pocket jacks as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make the call. Um, with my stack size, I can easily put a lot of pressure on him here, as long as he doesn't have a nutted hand, like, uh, you know, eights, nines, tens, um, jack, queen. But that's going to bring a turn of an ace of clubs, feeling really great about the ace of clubs here, right? Because now I'm beating jacks, and beating queens, and beating kings, um, and beating, um, have the nut redraw to things like sets and um, you know possibly you could have something like an aces up and that's a favorable card for him but I think all in all it's a more favorable card uh, for me than it is him so yeah also possible he's gonna have hands like ace king ace queen that uh, just do a normal uh, kind of c bet and this ace helps him but I'm gonna go ahead and bet 25,000 um, because I think he's checking back just so so often, and I would like to continue to build value. And you know, if I get the gin card of a queen on the river, um, you know, probably try to get his whole stack in, or a seven for that matter. He's gonna raise me, um, and this is I don't know. While we're talking about this hand, I'll call it the donk's corner. I think because of the sizing, um, because I'm drawing to the nuts. I kind of have to call although am i only drawing to am i only drawing to so sevens i'm going to call off on the river right with uh with the jack high straight more than likely uh, non-spaded sevens um and then queens non-spaded queens so arguably three outs or six outs um with the spade you might have to call off as well um 
being being that this is eight game mix and not no limit hold'em, um, my chips are really really valuable, right? And so, you know, getting rid of another fifty thousand chips here, and possible river bet um, is gonna really you know it's gonna hurt you in the stud games. It's gonna hurt you in the in in the other games where you can see so many stud hands deeply and completely get unlucky with different draws and things like that and uh and have to abandon the hand and if you have the chips you can afford to do more of those make more nutted hands um, where short stacks can't afford the big bets short stack if they have a three straight three flush kind of hand it's really going to be expensive for them to go all the way and they'll pretty much have to be all in a lot of the time so um, taking all that into account, I kind of regret the call, even though I have, do have a draw for the nuts. Um, I think by him raising there, he's, he's just ahead. It puts him on sets, it puts him on jack queen, it puts him on aces up. So I'll make the call. It's going to bring a spade on the river. Uh, I guess fortunately for me, because I'm going to check over to him, and he's going to tank now for way longer than he did on the turn with the, with the raise. And... Um, He's going to check back and uh, turn over the jack queen for the flop nuts. So that's going to take me from three something down to about 200,000. I'm going to stay in the 200,000s um, throughout the hand for hand, which is uh, above average chip stack still. And um, you know he's going to take this pot from me. And I'll just have to be patient until I have another opportunity to, uh, to make a big surge. Hand for hand in the eighth mix. Uh, lost a big pot to this gentleman right here. He decided he's going to flop the nuts. Jack a queen on a uh, eight, nine, ten board. Um, so I'm drawing dead on that one. And um, yeah, so sitting here with uh, two, 260 or so. Holy shit, what a round. So uh, I told you I misplayed the uh, no limit hold him uh, hand. And then um, short stack PLO. I, I didn't have a short stack, but I went against a short stack. Um, lost a little bit more, so I spent most of the, the um, before the three table redraw at below 200,000 chips. Um, which, when you know you're above three and second in chips to start the day, doesn't feel great. Uh, but then we'll have the three table redraw at 18, and. Uh, Stud eight, I'm making all the hands in stud eight. So stud eight was my savior. Um, I make a wheel, um, even the hands I'm behind in, I'm chopping um, the split pot. Um, There's one against the guy with a lot of chips at my table where he made his gut shot straight on the river, otherwise I'm scooping. So uh, yeah, stud eight was good. And then deuce seven, um, I just made a whole bunch of hands. So life is good there, 646,000 uh, chip leader, uh, 16 left. There we go. Yeah, so Omaha eight, four-handed, I'll basically flop the nuts with an ace, four, six flop. I have the deuce three, five with two spades, two spades on the board. I have the deuce five of spades, a so straight flush draw as well. Um, I will bet the turn and get no action, uh, but the blinds are just so high. Um, every every pot that's abandoned by short stacks is just uh, you know another 100k or so. So 1.1 million, 4.1 million chips in play. There's uh, still eight of us, so we're gonna go all the way down to six before final table. And um, yeah, feeling great. Yeah, so um, it's going to bring us to the final table. We'll make a final table. That's my uh, fourth final table in the BSOP in three trips. So I made a, a final table in a smaller um, one-day No Limit Hold'em. My first trip, I made um, two final tables in March, and, uh, and we'll make this six-person final table for the eight game. So I'm gonna start the uh, final table with a commanding chip lead, uh, 1.4 million of the 4.1 million. Um, so yeah, top of the world, feeling great. Um, but I'm gonna leave it there for this episode, break it up into two parts, um, because it, 
the main event is going on as we speak and there's multiple day ones for the main event and they also do a turbo or 30 minute levels instead of the one hour levels for day one um, day two they go to 75 minute levels so it's a great structure uh, but it's a turbo for the first three day ones at night so i'm feeling pretty good and the plan is to jump into the main event um, uh, later that night so uh, yeah so stay tuned for a part b so part b will go over the final table of the eight game and we'll have some hands from day one of the main event so stay tuned i should be able to get that out to you um tomorrow if you're liking what uh, you see here i'm uh, still looking for subscribers so uh smash the subscribe smash a thumbs up don't be that guy smashing the thumbs down without a comment uh, leave me comments leave me criticism uh, reach out to me um, that's the only way we'll get the the content dialed into what people want um, but anyway i'm having fun putting up the videos for this bsop introducing a lot of the american audience to uh, what's going on down here um, great tournament atmosphere the best dealers bar none like in the world um, as a dealer population you know say say 100 dealers like there's not a bad dealer there um, not a lot of floor decisions are needed because they are just on top of it. They control the game beautifully. Almost every No Limit Hold'em game has an action clock um, with your time extensions and all that. They just manage it that way. Um, they use either Kitchen Timer or they've got a little app on their phones, which is what you're seeing in some of the videos for which game and the eight game it is. They just see the dealers just swap out their phones. Um, they use that for their time. and. Yeah, as soon as it's your action, they wait a few seconds and start the clock and point it at you. Um, and then you know you're on the clock for 30 seconds. So um, what a just a fantastic No Limit Hold'em experience compared to what you see at the WSOP, especially as you get deeper and near the money where um, you know every decision is going to take people uh, two or three minutes um, oftentimes. Um, and it's just brutal. Um, I'm in favor of a 30 second clock with time extensions, like in like every situation for any amount. Um, but you know, that's just me. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned tomorrow. We'll finish up day four. Um, and, uh, and we'll go on to, uh, the rest of the series. So bye for now.